Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Warlord Wednesday. If you're new to the channel and this is the first time you've been here, please hit the like and subscribe button. So this week's it's the first battle report of uh, 2022. It's using the contents of the Island of Salt starter set. Uh, so it's Japanese versus the United States. So a quick background. Um, the US encountered very little resistance. They came ashore on the beaches of Okinawa. The Japanese knew the US would bombard the beaches with their 16-inch guns. So the Imperial Japanese Army stayed inland and dug in waiting for the US to come ashore. A small marine recon team is sent two clicks inland to recce head of the main force. Halfway there, they spot movement at an old ruin in the jungle. Which brings us nicely up to the table setup. Uh, as you can see, I'm using my Geek Villain Battle Mat, which is excellent. Uh, I've got a ruin centre top, which is where the Japanese are going to be all round about. And then the rest of the table is set up as jungle terrain. The areas of trees and scrub are... You can't see through them uh, if you're in them you can see out it compares a plus one cover save and the ruins are giving you a plus one cover save as well okay so let's go on to the armies so first off you have the imperial japanese army which is four order dice it's a lieutenant uh, two ten man um, imperial japanese army squads with a machine gun in each and the Type 97 uh, tank with an anti-tank gun on it. Next up, we have the US Army. Uh, they have five order dice. They are, again, two 10-man squads. Each squad has got two BARs in each. They have a M3A1 half-track, HQ plus one extra man, and a bazooka team. And the whole force is regular. So the first unit of US is there, the second unit is there, making use of cover, and the half track is there, it's got the bazooka team and the HQ in it, and then the Japanese have moved into the ruins there, the first squad, the second squad, the HQ, and the tanks come on that side, away from the bazooka team for obvious reasons and over here we've got the things we need to pay we've got the dice the he template tape measure and the pin markers i've got loads of pin markers so i'll use one marker to represent one pin rather than use the dial system which the numbers are almost impossible to see Especially for a bow report. Okay, end of the first turn. The M3 half track was there, it ran round, and the two units inside went down because it didn't do anything. The two infantry squads here were put on ambush. Uh, that one still sat on ambush, it hasn't fired. That one opened up when this marine squad advanced forward into the woods, managed to get a couple of hits, caused the pen, and managed to kill two guys. This squad moved forward and fired at that same squad and uh, completely missed. The tank moved forward. Whether this is a bit cheesy, I don't know. Turn its turret round so it was using both its machine guns and machine gunned the marine squad. Managed to hit but didn't do any damage, so put another pin on it. So this unit's now got two pins on it. So that's the end of the turn. 
And we put the other dice back in the bag. End of turn two. So the first order dice went to this marine squad and they thought the best part of valor was to move back out of range of the machine guns. So they advanced here behind. So now they can't be shot at because they're on the other side of this terrain. The M3 moved forward, it got shot at by that squad, I managed to put a pin on it and then I did order test for the bazooka team to get out, we passed that, they moved forward there and they took a shot at the tank but completely missed which is not good and then this marine squad moved forward using the M3 as cover to behind that piece of train again because they're behind the train they can't be seen so they can't be shot at and that unit is still an ambush that unit uh, is, i said took a pot shot at the m3 because it's open topped and it needed sixes and they managed to get a pin on it okay let's come back at the end of the next turn and the US have lost two order dice. First dice out the bag went to the uh, Japanese and they put it on the tank who used the machine guns and managed to gun down the bazooka team, which meant this is now free to run amok across the table. The that squad. The US squad that was here moved forward into the woods and triggered the ambush from that squad, which then shot and took two casualties off and put a pin on them. The US then shot back and again took two casualties and put a pin on them. The heavy machine gun then fired at them and put a pin on them but didn't cause any casualties. This squad fired on the marines as they moved forward put a pin on them got six hits managed to do five casualties so that squad is now going to do a break test two pins eight seven six so it's six or less and they're all the right eight so the whole squad's gone that's devastating for the us okay so start of turn four and the japanese have got the first order dice out the bag they've assigned it to the tank which has advanced forward and then fired its anti-tank gun at the m3 needing a four to hit which hit which put the other pin on it now, if we're all 4+, plus, it's knocked out and it's over with. So we've got the vehicle gone. It's another US unit gone. And we get a 4. So it's gone. Now I need to roll the my HQ inside. See? So my HQ on board gets a D6 hits. 6. That would be, wouldn't it? So that's six hits. Any roll of four is a dead guy. So three hits, four, five, and a six. That means me HQ is dead as well. So that's that gone, the HQ gone. So that means all that's left for the US is this one squad. Okay guys, so that's the end of 10-4 and it's game over. The eight US Marines left and the Japanese, I think, have lost two figures. So it's putting this carrying on. Um, next turn, they were going to move. Now if they move forward, they're going to get shot at by them. But if not, the machine guns on the tank are going to get them anyway. So game over and a resounding victory for the Japanese 
shows you what happens when you dug in and hiding in buildings so the uh, last of these marines are going to bug out and get back to the beach and uh, report back what they found thanks for watching guys hey guys so that was a pretty brutal game for the us um not having a tank was definitely a problem so the next thing i will be doing will be having adding a tank to my us i've got a few m4a2s so what i'm probably going to do is want to um, convert one for pacific theater by adding some uh, extra plank armor they do use like railway sleepers as extra armor on the sides of them for the pacific theater what i'll do is i'll probably raid the local costa coffee and get some coffee stirrers and stick them on the side of a m4 sharing to make it a pacific one so hope you enjoyed the battle report uh, as i said at the beginning don't forget to subscribe and see you all next time